Hello, my name is Thomas Biegler and I'm a member of the AIM class of 2021. Today, I will be pitching Atlantica Sustainable Infrastructure PLC, ticker AY, to be added to the AIM International Fund. To tell you a little bit about this company, Atlantica is an alternative power generation company that operates in four segments, renewable energy, electrical transmission, efficient natural gas, and water assets. Today, they have assets in North America, South America, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia, and they are currently underway of expanding in North America, South America, and Europe. Founded in 2013 and headquartered in Brentford, UK, I believe that Atlantica will be a great addition to our portfolio. When looking for a company to pitch, I knew I wanted to stay within the renewable energy space as it allows for the typically very stable utility markets to experience some more growth and for us to generate more alpha. I knew that the renewable energy market was expected to account for 65 to 75% of global install capacity by 2050, and this is something that really caught my eye. To put things into perspective, Renewable energy currently accounts for 26.2% of installed capacity, while fossil fuels accounts for 57%, meaning that by 2050, renewable energy will be without a doubt the largest demanded source of energy. When I came across Atlantica, I noticed that they were involved in the three fastest growing energy markets, those being solar, wind, and water, but they also utilize a diverse portfolio to support their growth. To explain, they use their electrical transmission and efficient natural gas segments to support growth in the solar, wind, and water brands. But another key factor that really sets Atlantica apart from their competition is that they are able to leverage big partnerships. To provide some context, Abengoa, a renewable energy technology company, created Atlantica Sustainable Infrastructure in 2013, and then three years later, when they were looking for some strategic partnerships and also needed cash for debt repayments, they ended up selling their shares to Algonquin, a powerhouse in renewable energy space. At this time, Abengoa and Algonquin formed a joint venture known as Aegis, and Atlantica, when moved from Abengoa to Algonquin, received a deal that they would have the first right to engage with Aegis on any projects that arise. Since then, Atlantica has achieved a five-year net income kegger of 47.3%, all of this as a result of working with Aegis and using whatever cash they can to get involved on big projects. So, because of these unique partnerships and their well-placed involvement in rising energy markets, I am recommending that Atlantica be added to the AIM International Fund at a price target of $37.21, representing a 24.45% potential upside. Moving on to my drivers, there are three key ways that Atlantica promotes gross profit. The first being their sustainable growth strategy. Now, on top of using those two business segments to create a buffer for their faster growing markets, Atlantica also places a huge emphasis on raising funds to support projects they're already invested in and to engage with new markets. Now, in terms of projects they're already invested in, Atlantica is doing a great job at hitting demanding capacity there, meaning that whatever the market needs in terms of energy, Atlantica is able to provide. And in fact, at all of their sites, they are producing at 99% capacity or greater. And then moving on to new markets that they may engage in, Atlantica is able to work with Aegis, this joint venture between Abengoa and Algonquin, so that even if projects may be too expensive for them as they continue to grow because they are this new company, they can become partially invested and not take on so much risk. The second way that Atlantica is driving profit is growing alongside this rising market demand that they are experiencing. Now, we already know that the global installed capacity for the world 
is expected to rise from 26.2%, which it is today, to almost 70% by 2050. Now, it may seem hard to wrap your head around growing so much alongside this market despite being a new company. However, Atlantica has already proven that they are capable of scaling quickly, as since 2016, they have increased their capacity by a whopping 118%. Finally, the third way that Abengoa is driving gross profit is by utilizing a diverse portfolio. Now, this not only helps their top line, but it also helps mitigate risks, which helps cut costs. By engaging in these four diverse business lines and also working on four continents and expanding their market share there, Atlantica is able to engage with more and more markets, take on more deals with local governments, and capitalize on, once again, this growing market. Moving on to my valuation, I started with three assumptions. First, I assumed a terminal growth rate of 1%. Typically, I would assume a terminal growth rate of a little bit higher, maybe more towards 1.5%, but due to all of the uncertainty regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, I wanted to stay on the conservative side, so I chose this 1%. Secondly, I assumed a weighted average cost of capital of 6.11%, and this was calculated through a few things. First, I assumed a risk-free rate of 1.25%. While this is above the current 10-year rate, I chose 1.25% to match what analysts typically believe the risk-free rate will move towards within the next 10 years. Next, I assumed an expected market return of 10%, as I think the markets will have strong growth moving out of this pandemic. And then finally, I assumed a cost of debt of 8%. Now, if you look at Atlantica's balance sheet as of now, their cost of debt is actually under 1%. However, I wanted to bump this up to 8% based off of the current money that is being raised and what they have to pay for that. Third and finally, I assumed about a 24-month recovery period from the COVID-19 pandemic, meaning that day-to-day operations won't really start to look like they were before all of this has occurred until fiscal year 2023. And at that point, their growth will become more steady. So in order to reach an intrinsic value for Atlantica, I first constructed a five-year DCF model. Using a terminal growth rate of 1% and a weighted average cost of capital of 6.11%, an intrinsic value of $39.57 was reached. Additionally, a sensitivity analysis of plus or minus 50 basis points on the terminal growth rate and the WAC was conducted, yielding a range of $26.87 to $58.47. Next, a price-to-sales multiple valuation was calculated, using a blended average price-to-sales multiple of 3.38 times, resulting in an intrinsic value of $32.35. Finally, an EV to EBITDA multiple valuation was conducted using a blended average EV to EBITDA multiple of 13.2 times, resulting in an intrinsic value of $38.92. By weighing these three models 40-30-30, a price target of $37.21 was reached, resulting in a 24.45% potential upside. It should also be noted that Atlantica pays a dividend yielding 5.4%. Of course, no business can come without its risks, and so I would like to touch on these quickly. First, Atlantica is exposed to a bunch of government regulations because of the market that they engage in. Especially in the United States, Spain, and Chile, if government regulations and incentives regarding creation of green energy change, their costs may increase. Secondly, there is some price uncertainty with the assets they are using to create energy. So, for example, if the United States continues to impose tariffs on China, the cost to bring solar panels to the United States may continue to increase. And if this gets to a point where it's too high to continue purchasing from China, Atlantica may need to move their production elsewhere. Finally, since the United Kingdom left the European Union in January of 2020, commonly known as Brexit, there has been some uncertainty regarding how operations at their headquarters will continue. Since management has not posed any huge concern over this issue, 
I do not think that this is anything to be super concerned about. However, it still does create some uncertainty, which in the end could affect their day-to-day -day operations and ultimately their gross profit. Finally, I would like to quickly touch on management. Atlantica's CEO and director is Santiago Siege Mandela, who was part of Atlantica Sustainable Infrastructure from the start and is committed to driving success with them. Additionally, Atlantica's CFO is Francisco Martinez Davis, and their director of investor relations is Perez Lier. So at this point, I would love to answer some questions from everyone. If you could please post them in the D2L discussion chat, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Or on September 4th at 11 o'clock Central Time, I will be answering these questions live during a Q&A. Thank you.